Okay, uh, Venerable Sister, dear Dhamma friends, so we have uh, come to the next Dhamma sermons. May you give your consent by saying Sadhu Sadhu. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Sila Tauso Kotita Bikuna Panchupadana Kanda. Anattato Yoniso Manasika Tabati. Dear Venerable Sister, uh, Dhamma friends, so as you know, for this uh, series of Dhamma sermons, so we have kept Silavanta Sutta as the topic. So we were discussing this in length, taking uh, various aspects of this Sutta, and yesterday we took uh, one term called Anattato. So just to remind some uh, background points before I enter the subject. So this sutta actually appears in uh, Khanda Sangyukta, in Sangyukta Nikaya, and it appears like uh, as a dialogue between Venerable Sariputta and Venerable Mahakottita. We need to understand both of them are Arahants. So it is not that for their own understanding they may be asking these questions. But later on when once they are conducting a kind of a dialogue, a discussion, it may be coming uh, available to the later generations and it has come to the canon and now it is available as a beautiful sutta for ourselves. So probably by seeing that it will be gen uh, really useful for the later generations that they might be discussing these things. So in one occasion, Venerable uh, Mahakottita after emerging from his uh, day's seclusion, he went to, he approached Venerable Sariputta and he asked a question. So after establishing oneself in uh, morality, sila, what next he has to do? So typically the answer is that he has to develop concentration and then he has to develop wisdom. Sila Samadhi Panya. But here, when Balsariputta giving a little radical answer, he says immediately, after developing oneself in, uh, after establishing oneself in morality, he can directly go to type of vipassana. Panchupadana khandata, panchupadana khanda, anichato, dukkato, rogato, gandato. Likewise, he is giving various ways of contemplation. So, on previous occasions, we have discussed how it can be contemplated as uh, impermanent, how it can be contemplated as uh, suffering. And on last week, we discussed how Panchupadana Khanda, the five clinging aggregates, could be contemplated as someone else's, Parato. So yesterday, I gave an account of uh, information, how because of our wrong understanding, because of our wrong behavior, how we may be developing some kind of self-view. Sakkaya ditti. Particularly, identity view, personality view. So, just to recall yesterday's sermon, so we discuss in mundane terms how we may be uh, engage with various activities and through activities how we are developing a person. We like to be important. We like to be a special person. And through activities we can confirm that. I am better than the other one. I have had this much, this many marks. So I am the uh, manager of the department. I am the CEO. So likewise, so we engage various activities, various occupation and uh, like manner. So all these things confirms us there is someone. There is someone exist. So we like to acknowledge it. We like to enjoy it. So more and more 
we like to engage ourselves with activities now today what i am trying to discuss is the other side that is how we can avoid developing this personality view so it in a way appears in a kind of a contradicting to the typical terms of the society typically in the society we like to be someone so we don't like to be a typical human being we like always to be a important person like to be a special person a superman a superwoman not a normal typical human being so that is how we react that is how we are uh, learning and present education system typically is there for us actually it gives us various opportunities so we are gathering more and more knowledge and the better we do the better we develop a person say suppose you are very successful in uh, learning you may be able to enter the university and you may be able to get a degree bsc msc phd whatever and then you can have a speciality you can have a uh, better opportunity at more than the others say you are very successful in uh, business then you are going in that direction and you are developing a certain kind of uh, say assets and through that you are getting enough income and you may have many subordinates and you have become the manager so they are you feel a special you feel important so others are also welcoming you appreciating you so that therefore so all these places we can see society actually believes that there are people i mean there are persons there are individuals there are selves and we also blindly follow the same uh, pattern and blindly we are from the beginning of our childhood till the death we are keep on fertilizing this understanding wrong understanding so how we can then involve with various activities without developing a personality view so that is in a way very interesting to explore because we can't stop engaging in activities so we need and we have to involve with various activities otherwise we can't run the society so when certain activities are coming on our way rather than going to grasp them rather than trying to get all the activities to our head so we can wait patiently if there is certain activity is uh, distinct to me if for certain activity i am the best person if i am the best choice then it may come to me naturally i don't have to go after various activities rather i just look after myself mind my own business and while i am staying in a calm manner if i am the best person if i am the selection whatever the activity is then that activity may come to me so once an activity like manner came to me then i have to dist- i mean i have to commit 100% i have to invest 100% so if i am thinking okay activities are generating self view personality view so i should not involve in any activity then i am just ignoring all the activities or i am uh, giving lesser percentage from myself then in a way i am not my du- not doing my duty so according to the buddha's teaching even an arahant when he was assigned an activity a job he does 100% but the beauty is without expecting anything in return he is not doing it to show off he is not doing it with a hidden agenda he is just doing it because he was selected he is the person now involved and the society or the the others colleagues have assigned him as the person who is responsible so he is doing it as as to uh, 
complete the activity, complete the obligation, and then he is more successful. More successful because there is no much grasping, and he is not doing it with craving to show off, to create a person, but taking it as the best way of uh, helping others, helping the society. And he is mostly then successful. So if you can see various, say even the Buddha's uh, lifetime, so he has involved with various things. He has uh, travelled so many areas and he preached Dhamma. And we can see that he was really successful. Because there were many religious groups, many other ascetics, and their reputation was going down and down, and Buddha's reputation was spreading more and more. So that indicates that Buddha was doing his deed, Buddha was doing his uh, activities. So there is another place, yesterday we discussed how we develop personality view, that is through unnecessary chattering. We like to involve with unnecessary talking. But here, how one may, even with talking, how one may avoid generating a personality view. So sometimes, yesterday when I was explaining that uh, various ways, say, when we are talking with others, so we have to use a language. So, without a lang language, we can't communicate each other. So, language, in a way, is a way of communication. But what happens is, so we are taking language too strong. We can't remember, it is just for the communication. To give you a simile, say, as children, we are used to play various games. Suppose you are preparing a a toy house and uh, you are preparing various dishes. So you have rice, you have curries, you have dessert for everything. So we have various representations. Say for rice I have certain types of leaves. For curry I have certain type of leaves. For fruits I have certain types of another leaves. And on that occasion we all the friends, children, have the convention or for, for this particular leaves we'll give the name as rice. For this particular leaves are the vegetables. These leaves are the fruits. These are the desert. So we have now common notion. We have established a convention. And we all even invite our mother or father to our toy house. And they even very I mean, knowingly, they come to our house. So they also sit and we offer them rice, we offer them curry, and they also pretend like eating. So we are, they are also very joyful. And they are also eating what we have prepared in our house. And when they are eating, do they have a notion that they are eating rice? Do they have a notion that they are eating vegetables? They actually not. Because they know that it is a children's play. It is not a real rice. It is not real vegetables. It is not real dessert. But they too enjoy. They too pretend like they are eating, they are enjoying, and they like they ask some more. So children are enjoying. So similarly, even the Buddha, even the Arahants are using language, but without grasping. So that is the beauty. So that's a very beautiful verse comes in uh, one of the sutta called Arahanta Sutta in uh, Sangyukta Nikaya. It goes like this. Sohoti bhikkhu arahang katavi ki nasavo antima deha dhari ahang vadami tipi so vadeya mamang vadanti tipi so vadeya loke samanya kusalo viditva Voharamattena so vohareya. It's a very beautiful, very profound verse. Buddha says, Sohoti bhikkhu arahang katavi. 
There's a bhikkhu who is an arahant. Kinasavo antima deha dahari. And he has completely uprooted the asava, influxes, and he is holding the last body. So there is no more rebirth for him. So he is an arahant. Ahang vadami tipiso vadeya. And even he says, I told like this. I spoke like this. So he is using himself as I. I spoke like this. I told like this. And he is referring like that. And sometimes he is saying, Mamang vadanti tipiso vadeya. And they told me like this. They spoke to me. So he is using the terms, I, to me, mine. So then what's the difference between a typical worldly person and an arahant? So the answer comes in the last sentence. Loke samanya kusalo viditva vohara mattena so vohareya. And they are really skillful. And they know that this language is just a language. It is just a convention. And knowing that, without grasping, they are using it just for practical purpose. So that's the difference. So but for ourselves, so if we consider, say, tomorrow, if a particular language is taken as the government's language, as the main language, so how many people would oppose it? Some people may give consent uh, according to it, to support it, and some others may definitely start uh, boycotting and various troubles. Because they don't know that language is just for the communication. And we are fighting each other for languages. And we are promoting languages, of course. We need the language. We need to have a precise language. We can acknowledge it. We can appreciate it. But always we need to understand it is just a way of communication. So then when we are using uh, communication, when we are discussing among ourselves, so we still use language and we still, we still talk, we still discuss and still we are not getting it too tightly, too seriously. And once the purpose is done, we are more relaxed. And if, if we can stay without talking, then that is the much easiest way to do. That is where Buddha advises, monks, when you gather, there are two things to do. Either you stay, you practice noble silence, or you discuss ten things. That is about having less things, about being contented, how to arouse energy, how one protects sila, how one develop concentration, how one develop wisdom, how one to maintain seclusion. So likewise, Buddha is giving ten topics which are more profitable for ourselves. Not to engage with unnecessary chattering. Because rather than using this beautiful uh, ability, what we human beings have, Buddha is asking us to use it uh, in a beneficial way for ourselves and for others. So that is another way that through chattering we could actually develop a personality view. But now by wise uh, being noble, maintaining noble silence or doing certain way of proper discussions, then we are developing some other qualities, some noble qualities. And then another side we discussed yesterday that some people are fond of sleeping and through sleeping our mind becomes more drowsy, more lazy and we avoid the clarity of the mind. So when someone is more awakeful, he is more and more aware of what is the state of the mind. How, whether I am creating a person, whether I am creating a self, whether I am creating an ego. So that is more aware. Because in order for him to uh, aware those subtle mental states, he has to have a very clear mind. 
so he has to have a very clear mind and through that clear mind he is understanding what the, what are the mental states so if someone is more lethargic more lazy more fond of sleeping then he definitely loses this ability on the other hand rather than being socializing so yesterday we discussed we like to socialize we like to involve with activities and involve with others people other people we like to have many friends if we don't have someone close by we at least call give a call because we like to socialize we have various societies so we have memberships in those societies so we like to get involved with various things and with many people but here buddha advised be secluded maintain seclusion so in a way that is very difficult in the today's terms so if someone is secluded if one if someone like to be alone so the other people find him not suitable for the society is a kind of outcast but he may not be doing it just to get rid of the society but understanding that too much involvement having too many friends actually blocks our progress in the spiritual terms because we need certain amount of seclusion in order to develop spiritually that is why in many suttas buddha ask go to a forest go to a empty place go under a tree and find a place where you can hide yourself in a way where you can get you are not getting any kind even a wind from the other people so you have your own seclusion so if you think that you can meditate in market or in supermarket or in uh, say in playground then you can't do it that's why we are establishing say monasteries forests uh, other meditation centers so we have the like minded people they come together and once you close your eyes you feel like you are alone even though there are maybe other people around you once you close your eyes they are also very uh, fond of being alone and they are also very silent and they also give us a example and we simply be with ourselves so this way so we are making a different pattern different style that we can have our own happiness we don't need others uh, association to have our own happiness it is true that by associating with others we can be happy but we find our own ways of becoming happy say for example say you are being aware of in breath and out breath at the beginning it becomes it it looks like very very boring you can't even maintain your mind few seconds but once you gather the momentum when you are successful in meditation more and more you can be in line with breath without missing any breath and mind itself start being with the breath and mind does not even like to wander to any, any other object so that state sometimes we call even as wonderful breath or beautiful breath because now breath has become beautiful and your mind have understood that being with the breath is less friction no frustration and you are just being with yourself and if you explore hall for satipatthana so buddha advises either to be with your body or be with your feeling understand your mind or mind states so nothing outside mainly inside so it's a inside journey so inside journey is only possible when we are alone and for this aloneness rather than saying that i am lonely buddha says rejoice that you have found a place to be alone found a place to be secluded and enjoy it 
And Buddha says sometimes even for monks, after becoming a Buddha, he sometimes address monks and say, monks, only one monk has to come to me who is just carrying me food. No one should miss, should see me. And he goes for seclusion even for three months. And you can understand, even the Buddha, after he becoming Samma Sambuddha, he spent several months in seclusion. He in a way has given us a very good example, the value of seclusion. So when we are as yogis, as meditators, we need to understand how to maintain what we, what we have developed, how to protect what we have developed. Because we are investing a lot of time, investing a lot of energy, and we are doing a lot of dedication to develop these states, mindfulness, concentration, wisdom, so suppose you are able to somehow struggle, somehow uh, put a lot of effort and you are able to develop something. But, we, but if we don't know how to maintain it, how to protect it, then with time we will lose it. Then suppose you are again coming to a retreat, putting a lot of effort, dedicate, dedication and again you develop yourself. Again you go back to the society, you engage with unnecessary people, and again you lose everything what you have developed. This way, it is very unlikely that we come to a very good level of understanding. So we need to understand, as we are developing spiritually, we need to select whom are helping us, who are the Kalyanamittas, who are on the other side, whom to associate, whom not to associate. What are the styles of life? which are more promoting, which are more helpful and what are what is the lifestyles which are more harmful. So we need to understand this Samma Ajiva, correct livelihood, how well we have to behave so that I am protecting mindfulness, I am protecting what I have developed, I can maintain uh, uh, virtues. So like that I have to select, I have to protect myself. So sometimes this appears like contradictory to the terms of the society and that is also acknowledged by the Buddha. So now we are trying to develop something contradicting to the society. So society says there is a person, that person has to be nourished and there is someone, he has to be protected, there is an individual, he has to be protected. So likewise the society in large are promoting the self-view, promoting the personality view. Then the yogis, arahants, Buddha are on the opposite side. So this is actually uh, well said in one sutta called Dvetanus Pasana Sutta. It goes like this. Sukhanti ditta mariehi sakkaya suparodhanam Panchanika midang hoti sabba lokena pasatang. What it says is, what nobles people seeing as happiness in uh, reducing self view, avoiding self view, Panchanika midang hoti sabba lokena pasatang. For the majority, the large, society in large, is contradicting. So this is well said in this particular sutta. <coughs> and it further says like this, Yampare sukato ahu tadari ahu dukkato. Yampare dukkato ahu tadari yo sukato vidum. So it's an exact point Buddha is telling there. So something others take as happiness, noble people are taking as unhappiness and the majority taking as something suffering, noble people understand it is the happiness. So it is in a way complete opposite. You can understand it is going in the other direction of the stream. That is why sometimes we say the spiritual quest is against the grain. We have to swim against the grain, against the waves. So in a way it is difficult. So society is trying to carry us 
with the wave and they may hint us they may insult us but we need to understand where buddha has directed us how buddha has advised us how the other arahants have taken the correct path and given enough examples and if we are to go in their path in the buddha's path in the arahant's path in the noble's path we should have enough courage to go in that path and avoid the typical temptations coming from the society and in uh, another sutta we discussed yesterday that certain things when we are thinking reflecting it develops personality view certain things when we are thinking it in a way blocks the certain personality view or even cut off the personality view so those things we need to understand that is what buddha explained in uh, how to handle influxes that is a actually a different subject in a kind of a vast subject so i can't explain everything in this uh, sermon just to give a indication buddha has given various methodologies how we can handle these influxes what are the ways that i need to uh, behave myself restrain myself the ways that i have to uh, even maintain my activities how i have to eat i have to uh, sleep and like manner so buddha has explained very beautifully seven uh, ways seven methods that how one can behave or how one can uh, practice in order to avoid influxes asava separately in another sutta in mula pariyaya sutta buddha explain how a typical person develops the personality view not only personality view but taking the wrong uh, understanding wrong perceptions yesterday also we discussed to some extent after he is seeing something he delights in seeing and he li- he sometimes think he is the seeing he is inside seeing so like manner he develops a story out of what he has seen but here buddha advises for the training for a seeker after something is seen it is not kind of a typical way of recognition tip- typical way of perceiving but he sees things little differently and he trains himself just to stop at seen probably you might have heard when you come to retreat some teachers might advise you even though you have eyes behave like a blind even though you have ears behave like you are deaf even though you are fully vigilant fully active behave like dead so this has a deeper meaning because if you start once you see something if you keep watching the same thing and trying to analyze it and uh, finding out all the little detail little signs there then you start developing a story out of it more and more you proliferate more and more you get entangled more and more you get confused so this mental proliferation is one major aspect of vipassana how one can overcome mental proliferation so today morning also we or rather uh, today uh, during the afternoon discussion also we discuss so this mental proliferation prapancha unless we address it we can't have a inner silence so as we grow on vipassana if we can assess ourselves if we are to assess ourselves whether we are growing or whether we have missed the path 
then of course we have to experience calming down ourselves settling our mind in a stillness less chattering so these are the ways in a way we can measure whether we are growing in the path so in one sutta venerable sariputta says योच पपंचंगिवान्पंच पदे रो आराधयीसो निबाण योग क्षेम अनुतर सो इफ सिंपली ड्रॉप्स दिस पपंच ड्रॉप्स मेंटल प्रोलिफलेशन निपंच पदे रो हि लाइक्स टू बी स्टील हि लाइक्स इन अ सैलेंस लेस् इन अ चैटरी Aradhi so nibbana. He invites nibbana. He invites stillness of the mind. Yoga khemang anuttaram. That is the complete freedom. So you can understand, it is the path for the freedom. But thinking, story. I mean, again and again going to stories. It is the path for out of the nibbana. You are going in the wrong direction. So if someone says. through thinking he has attained nibbana then you can understand he doesn't know the subject because through thinking you can get mad you can get confused it is not through thinking that one attain realization that we need to very well understand that is where we sometimes advise so when you are meditating when you are experiencing some kind of sensation don't bring book knowledge to there don't try to analyze rationally just experience it directly keep your mind to the minimum level of thoughts but just observe the obse- this sensation with a non judgmental awareness so this is how we typically advise because that is the way that one can still the mind that is the way one can open oneself for the arising of the wisdom but if we are trying to proliferate say someone has a very sound understanding about theory so say he is simply touching this table and now he is experiencing some kind of tightness so he start thinking so this tightness this is earth element so this is not only earth element it has the other three elements also supporting and it they are appear in various ways and in science it is in various raw materials or atoms elements uh, sub particles and various theories quantum theory uh say newton theory whatever they say so he go on and on thinking about his experience analyzing his experience so that is maybe the reason why the scholars the well well learned people found it is difficult to meditate because they their mind are conditioned to discriminate conditioned to find more detail to find defects to find more and more theories think so for them therefore just having a very simple experience just stop at that level without mental proliferation is extremely difficult because we don't know how to stop we don't know how to keep back our learnedness we don't know how to de learn the process to come back to our innocence come back to our child experience so for children actually it is very easy in a way because they don't have much of the burden in their mind their minds are very clear clean and once they close their eyes and experience something they can directly relate with the experience but we as adults as we learn more and more we have a lot of information in our mind our minds become more and more conditioned and we can't really easily 
go back to this direct experience so that's why buddha advised even for trainings that is the sotapanna sakadagami anagami even buddha advised so you stop once you have experience you stop at that direct experience level don't go for proliferation don't go in too much thinking but keep it to the minimal level so it is very difficult in a way that is why it takes time so you can theoretically understand these things but training only through training only you can behave the mind you can tame the mind because minds are condition to think to proliferate to create stories and in a in a deep manner buddha explains how one avoid generation of personality view so that is also explained in mahapunnama sutta in majjhima nikaya so there buddha explains na rupam attato samanupassiti so there someone now associate say buddha arahant sangha the true people noble people and he learns dhamma he more and more try to practice live according to them and he restrain oneself himself and therefore he does not consider this body as a self as i said earlier when he is communicating with others he can refer this body as i but not with grasping he know it is 32 parts he know it is just four elements he know it is in a com- continuous changing it is just in a flux so he experientially understood it say sometimes yogis say so when they do say rising and falling after they come to some extent so the whole part becomes some kind of particles so the notion of unit has broken everything becomes very tiny particles so like that kind of insights are there with certain yogis so with such insights so they maintain some kind of a distance from the wrong view even though sometimes they refer this body as i am that is no too much grasping in their uh, way of talking and uh, when someone is meditating for example we may be starting with in breath out breath in breath out breath but later on you may come to a state in breath out breath has gone you are just being being with some kind of rubbing sensation just some kind of movement so you are coming back to that very minimum experience and we advise now don't put the conventional terms now don't put in breath out breath again because you are have passed to the direct experience in direct experience now you are touching the intrinsic characteristics individual characteristics of the elements that is a direct knowledge so when you are touching direct knowledge so again if you are coming back to the conventional knowledge you are again going back so therefore in meditation at the beginning it is conventional we are using signs we are using language even we are using even noting that is in a way thinking but later on we are dropping one by one and we are coming to very simple direct knowledge with the experience experience which is so simple and we have to maintain that simplicity and while maintaining that simplicity we are watching the experience we see that how phenomena arising how how they are changing how they are disappearing so so they are we have no person it is not the person who came here is watching it that complete personality view at least temporarily have eliminated so it is not that we are trying to reach the goal ultimately and at the moment become deluded rather the very moment you are away from the personality view 
that moment you are in a way enlightened you are free from suffering you are free from delusion there is no lust there is no hatred so therefore going after results is in a way wrong it develops some kind of frustration rather than doing so if i can come back to the present moment if i can fully open to the present moment and come back and touch the direct experience and fully aware of it fully with it be mindful with it then at that time there is no personality view so in a way so we are cutting this fetter gradually so we can't immediately attain some kind of a concentration and after emerging from the concentration no more no more personality view so that is in a way kind of a myth so that is how we think sometimes because we think okay there is a very high concentration state of mind so once you reach there there is something you achieve something you touch once you touch it all the defilements are cuts off so that could be a kind of a imagination we have but according to the buddha's teaching then and there you are reducing the defilements then and there you are enlightened then and there you are awake and as as and when defilements are arising you are using mindfulness and various skill skillful means to i mean to overcome those unwholesome states and come back to the purity so that is how buddha explained to venerable malunke putta and venerable ananda in maha malunke putta sutta how one may develop one self in spirituality and ultimately one would be able to cut off these these three main defilements or these three main fetters what we call sakkaya ditti vichikicha silabbata paramasa so in a way it is very interesting so that should be in a way our goal so we can't achieve arahantship immediately so we have to go in a gradual path and it we have to have enough patience and we are slowly slowly developing slowly slowly maturing and uh, at the beginning of course we may be result oriented we may be really enthusiastic we have a lot of courage lot of energy but it is not a 100 meter game so for example in 100 meters so you have energy and immediately you run 100 meters and you are done but in the spiritual quest it is a marathon so you have to still run not walking but still you have to do it for a long term so we need to understand that so have energy for say several years not for one month not for two months so then we are di- going in a healthy path otherwise if you try too hard say you are waking up at 3:30 uh do many sittings many walking may- next day also same thing many sittings many walking and sometimes not even sleeping not doing any other thing no any other activity not talking with others you are fully with meditation then ultimately you can go even mad and I, actually i can remember in uh, anapana sati book written by venerable mahatar shri nyanarama thero he says if one is engaged in anapana sati meditation it is a must to have at least 5 hours sleep so you can understand it is a kind of a balanced way of approach so you can't develop mind by force you can't stress it but you have to look after it be gentle to it and then naturally allow it to grow and you are maintaining a, a situation or surrounding which is more beneficial more uh, protective and then you are developing 
So, in the Mahamalunki Putta Sutta, how Buddha is explaining to, uh, to overcome defilement, in a way, is the approach that we are taking. So, Buddha says, so someone who already is restrained, already established uh, in morality, he attains some amount of concentration. So, they are actually Buddha has taken first jhana, second jhana, like that. So, some concentration he established himself. Say here we t- typically take upachala samadhi or excess concentration as the bare minimum. So, as I said before, we can uh, realize whether we are at that level. Once we are at that level, we can't distinguish whether it is in-breath or out-breath, whether it is rising or falling, but there is some kind of sensation. So that is a clear indication. Now the conventional world has gone. Now we are with the very bare minimum level of experience, at the elements level. And so once we reach there, Buddha says, Whatever the experience more prominent has to be contemplated, has to be observed as anicchato, dukkato, rogato, gandato, sallato, agato, abadato, parato, palokato, the same list what we are taking in the Silavanta Sutta. The same information Buddha is putting in this Sutta, actually in the Silavanta Sutta, Venerable Sariputta is giving the information, giving explaining us the method. Now here, Buddha himself is explaining us the, us the method. So it is exactly matching. So there is no discrepancy. So it is exactly matching. And, uh, but there is a tricky point. In Silavanta Sutta, Venerable Sariputta does not talk about the concentration side. But here Buddha has said about the concentration side. And uh, Buddha further says, when one is, say for example, after establishing in certain amount of concentration, <coughs> say what is more prominent is, say some kind of pain. I am taking an example. So that pain, one has to see in an angle of impermanence, how it is changing, how it is evolving, how it is arising, how it is disappearing and one is simply observing it and while observing it suppose it completely disappear and you are coming to a state of mind there is no any other object and Buddha says and one needs to understand the value of that state Buddha says that one inclines one's mind towards that sabba samkhara samatha inclines towards the sunyata inclines towards the animitta inclines towards the appanhita so there it is not just uh, observing phenomena but if the phenomena complete disappear still one does not become upset but one knows it is not essential to have phenomena to maintain mindfulness. But there is a way, there is a state that mindfulness is there, but there are no any, any objects. So in a way, you are in a very peaceful state of mind, very still state of mind, and mind is extremely pure. But at the beginning it might look like very boring. So we have to make it abundant. We have to make it our second home or our home. At the beginning it appears like something impossible to maintain. So that is why we sometimes advise. So once you reach space, so you, you, you go again to that place. Go again to that place. And you know the path and say if you spend one hour to touch the emptiness, next time you go within 45 minutes, within 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. And you, once you sit, if you like, 
either you can go with to an object or either you can maintain a free mind so you are developing yourself and buddha encourages to keep the mind if there is no prominent object keep the mind still keep the mind empty so sometimes we can't appreciate the emptiness so while being in emptiness we want to do something so sometimes we some we have to advise yogis don't do anything so once you reach there just be so it is very difficult for us to be completely idle because we want to do something we want to involve ourselves with various activities thinking hearing talking reading watching so we need to have something but when we come to these states of uh, vipassana once you are in these states when your mind is completely free maintain that state of mind without doing anything and if you are successful in doing it and while maintaining that state in a relaxed manner you sometimes feel certain pain again arise and you are simply watching that pain and again it disappear you come back to emptiness a certain thoughts are now arising you are in a very equanimous state and you see how they are popping up the very beginning stage you can understand and after understanding it you are watching it like someone else's thoughts and you simply can able to let it go and you are coming back to your home home is nothing but nothing but emptiness and this process has to go many many even years even because we need to understand our way of thinking habitual tendencies are coming from many many lifetimes so if we think that we i can be purified within a day so it is extremely unlikely probably possible during the buddha's time there are people just after hearing a dhamma sermon from the buddha they became arahants actually they have passed all the stages and they became arahants they it has happened but today if we are overestimating ourselves we are at that stage then it is more likely we are overestimating ourselves we have to be very humble because we are now living 2600 in the front i mean the very cream of the arahants were they are in the past now we are in a not into that much not into that caliber and we have to be humble to accept it then we have a path to grow when we have then we have the patience to practice and with that patience when we are practicing slowly slowly we can understand mind is releasing mind is becoming less friction and mind can be maintained in emptiness and you become more relaxed and ultimately buddha says that how even arahants and buddhas are maintaining their mind so we have discussed now sometimes the way of thinking generates defilements we are entangled in various confusion sometimes languages if you are not properly using it the way of handling language can generate personality view so if we are not mindful in seeing things hearing things it can generate defilements so therefore when someone become an arahant or consider the buddhas how can they maintain their mind are they lost all the appetite are they completely become numbed it is not now particularly according to the teaching buddha has more capacity than ourselves to enjoy the tastes 
Buddha and the Arahants are still not grasping. And mostly they, are, they have maintained their mind with the emptiness or with uh, signless concentration levels. Because that is actually revealed in one Dhammapada uh, verse. I use this verse as the final uh, note, I mean final uh, um, point. So there, Buddha explains very beautifully how Arahans and how Buddhas are maintaining themselves. It says like this, Yassasava parikkhina aharecha anisito Sunyato animitto cha vimokho yassa gocharo Akaseva sakuntanang padang tassa durannaya So what it says is Yassa sava parikkhina Whatever was the influxes, asavas All are eradicated, uprooted Aharecha anisito They are not greedy of food Or they are simply maintaining some kind of detached approach towards food Sunyato animitto cha vimokho yasa gocharo. So, sunyata animitta, emptiness, signlessness, become their way of maintaining their mind. That is their resort. Akaseva sakuntanang padantas duranaya. Like birds flying, after flying in the sky, we can't trace their path. So, the way the minds of the Arahans and the Buddhas have uh, maintained how their minds are uh, maintained it's very difficult to trace because there are no objects typically they are associating if they like they can associate of course but typically after understanding that association of objects is troublesome is friction so they simply maintain the mind in emptiness in uh, signlessness so with that note, I like to wind up uh, today's uh, Dhamma talk. So in a way it is little deep, but we need to understand even though Buddha's uh, teaching appears deep when we are discussing like this, but when we are into practice, it, it appears very direct. And you all are touching these states in your meditation, but we need to be very humble to uh, recognize these states and have a kind of a humble approach when according to the Buddha when Buddha is advising okay these states are the states that we need to make abundant these states are the ones that we need to drop so there we need to ad accept Buddha's advice and then to understand where we have to go on because we are going in an unknown path. We are going in a road which we have never gone before in a way. So therefore, we let's, let's become more uh, humble so that when we are developing, so we relate our experiences, we uh, uh, reveal our experiences and then get the advices or listen to the Dhamma and accordingly we go in the correct path. So with that final note, so I wind up today's Dhamma sermon and wish you uh, to experience these beautiful states that what Buddha is teaching and what Arahants have uh, experienced and what noble people have experienced and uh, being able to, having this beautiful uh, human life, to make use of this human life, make use of this beautiful rare opportunity and to get the maximum out of this life. Thank you very much for listening.